How's it doing everyone? Steve Modi here back in another video and this is my laptop. It's an Asus uh, X55V that is horribly underpowered for any productivity tasks but there's a bigger issue and in today's video I guess we're going to try and fix that issue which is the actual hard drive. So we've jumped up the task manager right here and as you can see well, if that would focus, we're not exactly doing anything. There's a couple things open down there, but nothing's really doing much, and we seem to be spiking on the hard drive, and we're not exactly getting the best performance, whether it's waking up from sleep and those kind of things. We're getting quite a lot of lag and stuff. So, uh, the basic specs, I guess, if you want to know what it is, I've upgraded to 8 gigs of RAM. It's got some little crappy i3, despite the uh, i7 sticker there. It does have an i3 in it, unfortunately. So, it's not really the best um, actual productivity-oriented laptop, but I do write some stuff on it and I do use it on the go because it's my only laptop that I own at the moment until I actually go ahead and buy one. But as you can see, it's starting to drop off now, but whenever I do something, this drive activity spikes and the whole computer freezes. So I've got a couple of these OWC drives uh, just lying around from, actually this is quite an old one, but when I used to do uh, Mac upgrades and stuff, I ended up with a bunch of these OWC ones. I've got one that will probably go in that computer. We've got one down there hanging around in that computer and I think we've got one over in my drives over here no we don't, we've got a Kingston one but all, all my drives and those kind of things so basically today we're going to go ahead and actually see the real world benefits of adding an SSD so this drive has been in action for about six to twelve months now so it's had a bit of an install in terms of Windows there it's been quite a while so we're gonna actually see what kind of improvement we get on a day-to-day -day basis when adding an SSD because a lot of tests are done when there's a fresh install of Windows practically nothing's running on it and there's like a slight difference and those kind of things so we're gonna see the real-world benefit of chucking an SSD into a system like this that's already going I run like 40 something tabs in Chrome open we eat up all the RAM and we'll see what kind of speed improvement so I guess we'll shut it down we'll do an actual boot up test because that's one of the worst um, scenarios when I actually try and do it and see what we actually get out of adding an SSD. Okay, so as you could uh, see that we've got 1 minute 34 or so on the timer, not the most scientific test, but my point being um, that, and I was going to show you the uh, actual performance tab to show you the drives that are sort of maxing out. As you can see, the disk uh, C drive is, if we focus, there we go, 100% um, usage. So. Yeah, it sort of stays maxed out for like this for like half an hour or something. So we're going to see whether we can get a better boot up time and actually the launching into program. So I guess we'll uh, jump out our toolkit and start to fix up our SSD and chuck it nicely inside our drive. I know this is a Mac one and it's not the fastest SATA drive, but it's still better than a mechanical hard drive and we'll see how much better it is. That's interesting. I was uh, going ahead to pull off this bottom cover and I found one of my 16 gig Extreme Pro cards in the actual... Uh, in the actual card slot, so there we go, get an extra SD card that can hold like 10 minutes of video. Okay, so my genius plan at this stage was to go ahead and get this SSD and put it in the CD drive bay where I normally put drives in, but the problem with that is the little SATA adapter to the uh, mini CD SATA, I don't remember what the name of that is, is missing. I have no idea where it is. I, I normally run one in this laptop and run one in the dead Mac up there that I then took out and used in another computer. Um, yeah, so my brilliant plan has been foiled, but luckily enough for me, I have many drive docks, so I can just stick this in a drive dock and we'll clone it that way. But this is a major problem because I had planned when we are going down to PAX that I'll take this laptop, pull off the uh, little cover here, and I could just hot swap hard drives in and out while we're filming and those kind of things because we know for a fact 4K is not going to fit on a few SD cards. So my plan was bring along a couple of... Uh, I believe two terabyte or one terabyte, I don't remember what they are, um, I think they're one terabyte, uh, drives anyway, and basically hot swap them in and out so I have plenty of storage to go ahead and basically record the whole day so that when we're doing videos throughout the year or something like that and I want a reference image or I want some extra footage of a certain product, I can just look back at that and go ahead and find those shots. So um, I guess we're going to have to actually buy one of them external drive enclosures uh, to take with us because um, we don't have that adapter. I could order in an adapter. But, um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to use the adapter very often, so I think what I'll do is just, um, 
just order the drive cage. But for now, we're going to go ahead and start rebuilding this laptop and cloning. But um, I do have to say, 15-inch notebooks, especially lower-end one, have so much room in them. Like, the cooling area has so much room around it. There's so much room just everywhere. I'm used to, like, little 13-inch laptops that have, like, no room and all those kind of things. But I guess, well, we're inside a laptop. There's our soldered RAM. There's the video RAM. I don't know, CPU's on the other side, cooler, all those good things, and um, yeah, we'll put it back together and uh, start cloning because, um, yeah, my, my plan is foiled, unfortunately. Okay, so at this point, we kind of just shoved everything in. There's no real screws holding anything in. Uh, whoops, I just kind of pulled that out by accident, but there's no screws really holding anything together. So I'm just gonna sort of hope we can uh, get everything cloned over with the charge that we do have available left on the laptop. Like, everything is loose. Hopefully all the buttons still work, but I better grab the... Uh, USB cable so I can go ahead and uh, start cloning the computer. I'll go ahead and USB 3 like a boss. And we'll uh, log in and do everything. Ah, uh, yes, that Australian internet. 31 minutes to download a 104 megabyte file. Okay, so at this point the SSD has gone in, everything's ready, we're just going to put the uh, laptop back together, but I have done some tests and it is incredibly fast. So what I basically did is, well, I sort of realised the ASUS splash screen was actually adding two seconds to the whole boot time. So uh, disabling that not only on the hard drive, but as well as on the SSD, I found an incredible improvement overall. So at the moment the laptop is nice and off and not on, and then like literally seconds and it's back on. So we hit that, powering up and... Bam, like, so fast, I am I still don't get my head around how that has happened. So, I was going to put in a graph at this section, but I don't believe uh, that there's even needing for a graph like you saw that before your eyes that booted up in that amount of time, which is absolutely incredible. Um, as you can see, I could go ahead and open stuff. It doesn't crash anymore, so nice and fast, nice and snappy throughout the whole operating system. All well and good. And overall, I'm really happy to see where it went. But also too, on the hard drive side. Now, I went ahead and pulled the SSD out like three minutes ago and put the hard drive back in and did the same optimization I did on the actual uh, SSD side. And I found about a three to four second improvement on the actual um, loading time getting into Windows. So I'm more interested to see what exactly is the matter with this hard drive rather than just... um like what what's going on with this but overall it's a nice and snappy little computer now I'm very happy um, other than that I think that's about it for this weekend project so we'll jump off to our advertising part and finish the video speaking of tech and learning and all those good things curious.com so if you are looking for a new place to go ahead and start learning some stuff they've definitely got you covered there they offer hundreds of free lessons to go ahead and get you started as well as for a mere $7.99 a month you get unlimited access to their full back library of videos not to mention they're taught by people like myself. Now on top of that, their library is rapidly growing, so there's always something new to learn. But for CPMod viewers, you guys get a 20% discount when you use our code bit.do slash CPModder. Go ahead and use that link to go ahead and visit the site or use Curious Teacher 20 at checkout. We get a kickback and you get a saving. So visit bit.do slash CPModder or use our code Curious Teacher 20 at checkout to save 20%. So with that being said, guys, like or dislike the video accordingly, let me know whether you've experienced this incredible speed improvement with your SSD. Also, too, let me know if you have any other SSD stories you'd like to let me know about. Other than that, guys, give us a sub while you're down there, and I'll see you all next time for another video.